Hey guys, welcome to The Wandering Wind. So today I wanted to talk a bit about uh, Genshin Impact and what you should do as a new player. So as much as I love Genshin Impact, if any of you have been thinking about playing it, you might be wondering how to start out. Well, in this video, I'll be outlining my top seven tips for new Genshin players in 2022. Number one, remember your daily commissions. Now, this is very key because... For one, it's a good source of Mora and Prima gems. So you get uh, 60 Prima gems a day for, do for doing all four commissions and then reporting back to the Adventurer's Guild and getting that bonus for them. Second, it gets you in the habit of daily play, which allows you to continue on with uh, both gaining materials as well as gaining different weapons and items and stuff for your characters and like artifacts. And then third, it does help you save for characters down the line. I've done the math, and if you do your daily quest every day for 30 days, you get 10 wishes out of that, plus a little bit extra, so probably 11 total, maybe 12, but I think it's just worth it to see that, yeah, you get, you know, 10 wishes absolutely free when you just do your daily commissions let alone if you do any quests and stuff that give you Primo gems as well. Number two, use food for success. Now, one of the only ways that you can heal your characters in the game, especially during combat, is either through a healer unit, which you do get Barbara for free, but she is very difficult to use correctly, especially if you're trying to use her and also deal damage. But you can also use food to be able to heal your characters in the midst of battle. And it also helps that you can go into your menu and freeze time so that you're not panicking while trying to get your characters healed up. And also, when you use certain kinds of food, it helps your um, stats get boosted in battle. So, uh, Jade Parcels, which you get early on in the game through a quest with Shang Ling, which is also a free character you can get. Um, you actually boosts your attack power for, for a limited time. I think it's like 30 seconds or 300 seconds. I'm not sure. But anyway, you can use that. And if you got low damage dealing character as your DPS, but you use that, then you're suddenly dealing like 300 more points of damage per hit, which can actually stack pretty easily and do pretty well, especially on say, a boss battle or just a mob battle that's especially hard for you at this point. Number three, don't sprint... Don't... Well, actually, part of number two, they, food can also help with exploration because one of the early games items that you can get is Barbados Ratatouille, which you can find at the end of Stormbearer Point. You can actually use this item in order to extend the amount of time you can glide, which actually helps you reach certain areas faster or just easier than it would be otherwise. So different items can do different things even outside of battle. Number three, don't spend Prima Gems on limited banners. Number one, new characters often need harder to get materials for new players and are often region locked. Like Shenha, one of the latest characters that was released, needed materials from a boss in the third region that was locked to newer players in order to increase her level past a certain point. This was very difficult for a lot of newer players and so made it very difficult to uh, sell her to <coughs> the newer people playing. Uh, also, it just ends up making her unusable and making the others unusable until much later on. Number, number four. Farm artifacts for better builds on your characters. First of all, there are two main artifacts, well, five artifacts that you can get for each character. A flower, a feather, a goblet, a an hourglass, and a crown, or a circlet. And two of these items, the flower and the feather, are locked to hit points and attack, respectively, 
as their main stat. Now, each artifact can get different substats, but only the main stat will increase reliably with every level increase on your artifact. Now, early on, this doesn't really matter as much because you can usually just swap them out easier. But once you start getting four and five star artifacts for your characters, you're going to want to be careful about what stats you have on your artifacts, especially as the main stat. Try for attack percentage or crit rate on the non-locked main stats, because otherwise you're going to have problems with getting enough damage output, especially on harder to fight boss battles and stuff. Number five, use your adventurer handbook. Now, one of the things that you can do from AR-10, I think, is you can use your adventurer handbook to actually locate specific enemies that you can mark on the map and then go fight for things like ascension materials. And once you hit AR-40, elite enemies will actually drop um, low-level artifacts that you can use to level up your artifacts. Um, artifacts actually take other artifacts as well as money to be able to level up. And once you get to a certain threshold, then they will stop being able to be leveled up. For three-star artifacts, I think it's level 12. For four-star artifacts, it's level 15, 16. And then I'm not sure about five-star artifacts. But many times, the higher the rank of an artifact, the more powerful it'll be. And the more experience it'll take to level them up. <clears throat> you can also use the Adventurer Handbook to gain more rewards, especially for progression and just in general getting more Primo Gems and more money, because as you gain, um, in the Adventurer's Experience tab, as you complete tasks in that tab, you will be able to gain rewards from those tasks, as well as once you've completed a page, it will give you the rewards listed on that page, and then we'll advance you to the next chapter. So, I'm currently on chapter 6. I'm actually um, stuck on the last goal for that chapter, but once I get to chapter 7, I'm sure I've got plenty of those goals already met. But, just being able to farm for extra rewards through that kind of a system also helps you with progression. Then, there is the <laughs> finding specific domains with artifacts that you want or need. Now, this is a very important thing because I have I have found that certain artifacts tend towards certain stats. For example, the Crimson Witch of Flames set, which if you get a two-piece set, increases uh, fire damage by 15% on a character. Um, I, have, I have found that most of the time... Uh, certain artifact sets will tend towards one stat or another. And the Crimson Witch um, tends, to ten tends to stray more towards um, increasing your fire damage or pyro damage. Whereas something like a um, defense-based set will tend towards defense percentage increases or something like that. So... Always try and farm in a group or set that will possibly give you the stats that you need. Number six, explore the game's world. Now, two of the things that you're two of the things you're wanna you'll wanna start right away when you start the game is hunting down animoculi and geoculi. Now, animoculi are glowing green orbs that look like the symbol for animo, the wind element. And similarly, geoculi look like the symbol for the earth element, or geo. Now, there are 70 animoculi in Mondstadt, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think there are 70. And for each animoculus that you collect and give to one of the statues of the seven in Mondstadt, 
you can increase the statues up to level 10. And each time you increase their level, you actually gain rewards like Primo Gems and also mainly an increase in your stamina stat, which actually helps you climb longer, swim longer, glide further. Uh, it also helps you use more heavy attacks, which are really nice and really useful, especially on crowd control with like Claymore users and stuff. But it's just very useful for that kind of a uh, reason. But it also is just um, really important in Leoe because with, I think, like 150 or so of the, of the G-Oculi, once you collect all of those, you can actually unlock a free five-star artifact by doing a specific quest. Now, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to eventually. I'm working on it, actually. <laughs> But it's just very easy. Um, there's a free Genshin Impact interactive map. You can Google it and go there. And you can actually um, have it show you where each of the Animoculi and Geoculi are. You go into your map. You mark where it is. You go there. You find it. You take the marker off. You find all of those. And then also there are Electroculi in Inazuma, which you don't have to worry about for a while. So... Don't worry about it. But the sooner you can increase your stamina to its highest point, the better. And just, you know, it, it, it's useful for stuff. And then also you can, as you explore the game, you can even find new locations for food, materials, weapon farming, artifact farming. You can actually find a video here on YouTube that I'll link down below that shows you how you can get 60 artifacts a day going around the Leeway map. And, you know, it's just very useful to go and find where everything is. Number seven, enjoy the game. First of all, it's an experience, not a race. You're not trying to speed run the game for a world record because once one thing, you're probably never going to be able to speed run the whole game once it's all out because there are four more regions, at least, that we've still got left to find left to discover and then there's plenty of other areas that they're probably going to add it at in the future and then the story itself is just beginning and ex enjoy the story enjoy the story as it unfolds for you personally and just for the community at large and we have so much more to see of it so don't worry about not being as far as somebody else that's been in the game since the beginning, because honestly, it's just going to get bigger and better as we go on. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And until, until I see you again, take care and enjoy playing Genshin Impact. Have a good night.